What's up everyone, Axel Toss here with the Juked app. Check it out on iOS or Android. All you have to do is search it up, Juked. It's basically a social networking platform for esports fandom, which we don't really have. But anyway, I'm here with Kenobi. Dude, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm excited to get to just hang out with you. Yeah, man. Kenobi is a good friend of mine, right? We're good friends. Oh, yeah. We're good friends. Yeah. Also a legend in Rocket League. Oh, please. It's true. Legend in Rocket League. And this interview could be an hour long, but it's not going to be an hour long because Kenobi has valuable time that he needs to take advantage of. Yeah, like, what, like sleep or something? Right, you know? yeah. sleep. He's got other people he can talk with business deals he, he needs to do so we're gonna chill and hang out for a second we are post event right now it is currently uh, Sunday and we just wrapped up the RLCS winter major Carnovi you're attending as a fan mostly yeah yeah pretty much just as a fan I just wanted to come and hang out be pretty nonchalant about it um, but still got to sit watch the finals um, and it was everything a land should be everything it is everything we've been missing these past two years you know missing well, we've been online sure. forever. Oh yeah, true. With, yeah. Co with COVID and whatnot. So I I miss this a lot. I miss getting to see fans, see other players, see every other content creator. Just be in person with everybody again. It's really been very special. That's been a theme in these interviews. Is uh, you know speaking towards that. You know how cool and how unique and how special a LAN event actually is. And you know we can speak on Rocket League. I don't know if you've been to other esports events. It's probably similar, but there's definitely like a camaraderie. You're seeing people you haven't seen in a long time. You're seeing familiar faces from all around the world, which is really cool. You know, um, yeah. Rocket but League just it brings people together. You know, yeah. and especially with new uh, regions being added to Rocket League, we're getting more and more diverse of people being involved with this movement, which is really cool. Yeah. But I want to ask you. Obviously, this is not your first Rocket League man. <laughs> no. You were at season one, which you won. Yep. With G2. That Wait. was um, that was I by Power Cosmic. Right. Yes. Yes. For we, a moment, we, but we then you got picked up immediately after. Right. Yes. And G2 <laughs> from there on. I by Power Cosmic, Cronovi, uh, Lachinio, and Over Zero. Yes. Who was subbing in for for Gambit? For Gambit, right? You won that event. You won the first. Luckily, yes, yes, we did win. Great we memories. Hard, yeah. Honestly, really great memories when I think back. Because I was hosting. I was the desk host for that. And it was already. And he killed it. It was already, like, amazing for me just to be able to do that. Being in Rocket League from the beginning. But then we had, like, 100,000 viewers. I don't know if you knew that. But, like, we. It was, like, it was like record breaking yeah, for Rocket like, League. It was crazy. We didn't, we didn't know what viewership we would get. And, like, during League Play, we're getting, like, five to 10,000, which is solid. But then, literally, at the live event at in Hollywood, like, same same area here, we hit, like, 100,000. Like, over 100,000. Yeah. The venue was, like, way big. smaller, too, compared to, yes. like, what Rocket League events usually are now. Yeah. The yep. first LAN was not that big. Like, maybe, like, 1,000 people at the top. Yeah, yeah. And that was an epic event. And then, season two. Let's just do a quick recap for fun. Season two. Why not? Season two, I didn't go to. Our team didn't qualify. We got like seventh, eighth in league that, play. We didn't do that well. Oh, no. And I could not stand to go. I felt like I felt really bad about it. I'd like, I should have gone. Honestly, I I really should have. But I was I was devastated. I I, I you have go. to go because of who you are, man. You yeah, know? I should. I like, really would have been nice to meet European fans for the first time because not exactly, everyone can travel exactly, all the way to exactly. like you know, Hollywood for the first it, one. Yeah, yeah. And season two was Amsterdam. Yeah. Clear, so you weren't able to make it there. No, I just watched. Season three was back here in LA. Yeah, I did go to that, even though we weren't playing. We also right. did miss that one. But right. I went as a fan, and that was a great experience. I was at the Will Turn, I believe, in LA. Yes, exactly. And then season four was uh, BC, Washington. That was um, at the MGM, the MGM National Harbor. Yep, and we got top four on that top one. Four. That was a great one. Yep. And then season five was London, London. Copper Box, yep. which we're going to be getting. They announced we're going to be getting that again for the, what is that, the Spring Major? Yes, Spring Major. Yep, that's going to be super nostalgic and super cool. Were you at the co the first Copper Box event there? Yeah, you? yeah, we, we went out really early, but I remember um, just hanging out at the event, and I was in the crowd, like, in Section 104 yeah. when the Justin Zero Second yes. goal happened. I was, yes. I was there screaming my head off. To this day, I believe one of the one of the best esports moments in history, really. Oh, yeah. It was incredible. It's like the most viewed moment in Rocket League. Yeah, is that super, moment. super awesome. Uh, and then season six would have been Vegas. back in uh, Vegas. Also a lot of fun. 
We, it's Vegas. We play. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, G but we also yeah it was that was still G that was still like Mira's or Jane Apps, but yeah, didn't do well at that one either. <laughs> and then uh, that's when I got out of there. And then it was season seven, I think, it was Spain. Uh, season no. seven was New Jersey. Oh, that's right. Season seven, New Jersey. Season eight was Spain. Season eight was Spain. Yeah. Did you go to either of those? I went to. We were top four with. That was when I was on Rogue. Right. Um, oh, that's right. With AJ. With AJ and Wonder. Yeah. yeah, yeah we yeah, we yeah. were like a surprise round. We weren't even supposed to qualify. We were like a two and five league play team, worst team to ever qualify for the world championship. We draw a pretty decent group and make it out of groups as a one seed. Yeah. Win our playoff match. So we were top four. It was like highlight of my career uh, for me because like I had just gotten like moved to a different team. I thought, oh, is this the end for me? And then like, you know, my teammates helped me out a lot. So season seven is really, really good memories for me. Uh, but then season eight, we, we didn't qualify for that one. And I didn't want to travel all the way to Spain. Um, so yeah, that's like all the lands. And it cut off right there after Spain. You know, we, then we With entered COVID. like the online era. Yeah, yeah season nine, no finals. RLCS X, yep. no finals anywhere, just regionals. Yep. This is the first time we've had an in-person event. Really, and it feels like a world championship, even though it's just a major, you know? It's true. It might as well be. With everything on the line, like, compare the prize money to, like, season one or whatever, it's like... I've been talking to players about that while we're here, and to hear that, you know, fourth place individually walking home with, like, you know, $20,000, and we won first prize, grand prize, world championship, season one, 27-5, split three ways, you know? We were... And I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. We're the World Championship first place prize this year, what, like $600,000? They're, they're playing for so much right now. The eSport has just exploded. It's crazy. And I, I couldn't be more proud of the eSport as a whole and for the players that get this opportunity. 100%. But that, you know, there's some point where you didn't want to compete anymore. Do you mind? Yeah. So that was um, on the new year of this year. I decided that I was going to retire and just move into content creation. Being a pro player is very stressful. There's a lot of expectations set on you. You have you have fans that you want to impress that you don't want to disappoint, and it's it takes a lot out of you. Um, May I though? Like your fans, they're great and all, but that's like a supplemental thing. What it comes down to is you and your competitive drive. Right. You can remove everything else if you want to. So I don't think you should go into it saying, you know, if you're, you know, you shouldn't even think about letting down your fans. That's not what it's about, right? Well, for me, I, I have a very large passion for the Rocket League community in and of itself because I, I practically grew up on Rocket League. Even like before Rocket League, people know I used to play um, supersonic acrobatic rock power battle cars. You know, I played that as a kid growing up. I like got me through like school it was what I did when I got home um, so I really care a lot about the fans of this game and my competitive drive definitely is what got me through the beginning of my career but as the end of my career was approaching because nobody can play forever and I, I'm aware of that as I realized this was kind of the end of my career I, I said this just isn't worth the stress anymore and I still want to interact with fans. I want to be a part of this community and I'll have a bigger impact and I'll get to experience more things by moving to content. And it's going to be less stressful on me because I can focus on me finally instead of focusing on... And I guess I, guess I, I never really felt like near the end of my career the competitiveness was for me. I wasn't really winning for me. Like I kind of was, but I wanted to do my, my fans proud. I wanted my fans to go... And yeah, that's what then, added the stress? Maybe, maybe. I'm, I'm, I haven't really given that part a lot of thought, but I wanted fans of me to be able to say, yeah. He's like, playing at his th best. This guy's the best player in the world right. and I love him, you know, stuff like that. And I actually wanted to live up to those expectations. Gotcha. And I felt like I wasn't. Gotcha. And that was earlier this year? Yeah, that was on the new year I retired, actually. So now I just do content creation for uh, KCP and I stream. Well, this could turn into a whole podcast because, it honestly could. <laughs> you know, I, I've, I've been of the opinion that people just retire too soon and, and I will die on that hill, really, um, with prize pools expanding and the veteran element becoming important and what that brings to a team, I'm... And I might be selfish, I guess, but I'm, I'm more inclined to hope that players stick it out as long as they can. And I'm hearing you on, on the stress side of things, and I, I would almost argue that you have to remove the, you know, being stressed towards your fans. Because at the end of the day, they don't have to be there to begin with. 
And I feel like too many people do rely on the fandom. And that can be straining. That can be mentally straining. Even if you're just a content creator, you know, you're not necessarily competing. Like for me, for example, if I'm on camera, on, on stage, I'm going to feel a certain pressure yeah. on the fans. But I wouldn't be able to do it for long term if I took too much of that negativity or whatever that might be. I have to remove that completely. So I guess my hope would be, can players, you know, based on what you're saying, can mm -hmm. players kind of remove that? Not in a malicious way. You still love your fans. Yeah. But you don't want to let the negative kind of affect what you're doing or what you want to do. I think I just, I set a high bar for myself. And when you're a professional player in, in any esport, really, you are defined by your results. If you cannot win the match, it does not matter. None, none of your work pays off if you don't get the win. And... You know, I was struggling quite a lot. Um, it, it was just difficult to just be facing loss after loss and to know that, you know, there might not be that many wins in the future. And on top of me, I genuinely wanted to see what content was like. Yep. And but you've really been doing to, that. You've already been doing that from the start. It's, it's hard to do content and be a pro player at the same time. There are only a few people um, who are very consistent and good at it. And there's been a lot more support in the whole scene like from other like wars and bigger wars and stuff helping their pro players move into content by giving them an editor giving them people who can give them thumbnails like, all that the pro players can do is hit record play some games and send it to somebody it's come a long way i never had that sure so it was hard to do both and i felt like i was juggling a lot and i'm not the type of person who enjoys doing something with like yeah, 50 I agree. Power. I'd rather 100% focus on. But one I thing. feel like whoever's on the stage at RLCS, whoever's legitimately competitive at the highest level of Rocket League, content is always going to be on the back burner. It's always going to be secondary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because everyone's looking at that trophy. So is that tough for you separating that? Because like, what I want to see, I want the best 50 players in the world on that stage, mm -hmm. and I think you're one of them. I think you're top I, 25. I think the reason I retired is because I no longer think that. I don't think I... Well, no, but what you just said was your team. So let me ask you this. Uh, let's say you had two of the best players in the world, and you could pick who they are on your team. Okay. Well, well then, yeah, maybe. But that would never happen. The, the two best players in the world would never agree to play with me for, like, Why a not? whole season. I don't know, because I would be really heavy. <laughs> That's what I... You'd be heavy? I, I would be way too heavy. Are you saying That's your, your I, hands are getting slower? Is that what you're saying? I, I am 24. And keep in mind, I'm 31, so be careful what there, you're saying there, right there now. Are, because I could be a There pro. are 15-year-olds currently, I like, don't... popping off on stage, and I'm 24. Okay, that's a nine-year gap. That's quite a lot, all right? The average age of an esports athlete is something like But it's 18, so early. Like, who, who's to say... So what? They have crazy mechanics. There's other elements that are important. Oh yeah, I mean there are veteran players still around, um, but they've 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 dedicated a lot. It's a lot of work, and I think for me, the work didn't justify like the the results. I definitely think I would get results I was happy with going down this road. So this was very much a decision that I felt more comfortable going with than sure. than really slogging it out and seeing where this ended okay let me let me ask you this then Let, let's say you did have the time and the the life balance to focus on a professional endeavor or what have you where you're you're playing the, the time that you need to play to be at the highest level possible do you think you could still be competitive on, on that you know assuming you have two decent teammates i'm not gonna say best in the world i i would like to think so um i think if i think if you apply yourself you can do anything Really, honestly. Um, and I'm the type of person who's very focused on what they do. I'm very goal-oriented. And I, I know this game in and out. I know what I would need to work on. It's just how much time would that take. So I would like to think that I could if I really, really worked hard for it. But I would rather work hard down a different path, honestly, where, where I'm at right but, now. Uh, and sorry to keep going on with this, <laughs> but, but like, you know, that makes me think of, like, our players in Rocket League... We want the best players to be able to focus on their skill and their craft, right? Mm. So if you're saying to me, you might have the craft and the skill to be able to compete at the highest level, but you feel like your attention is better somewhere else, I almost think that's a problem at a macro scale with with the 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 ecosystem itself. Like if you're one of the best players out there, you should be able to focus 
on what you on on compet on the competitive side without yeah. without feeling like you have to do the content side. Like in other words, the competitive side is everything. Getting to RLCS is everything. Getting the prize money is everything. And I feel like the content side, sure, it can be super lucrative, but for our pro players, their whole mantra needs to be the stage and RLCS. Yeah. So if something's pulling you away from that, I almost think that's a problem with the ecosystem itself. We don't want our best players to go do YouTube content. We don't want that, dude. I we like want that's, them on that's the stage. That's an inevitability, though. I think. Well, I, does I, the prize I, pool I, need to be bigger then? In our esports I mean, competition, players would not say no to a bigger prize. Would pool. you say no? I would never say no to a bigger prize. Like, pool. what's the That'd number of the prize pool where you're like, okay, maybe I will do the competitive side instead of mm -hmm. the content side? Is that what it is? Like, no. Uh, well, what I think is, I still believe that every player has a set amount of time that they can be a professional before, like they just they don't have it anymore. Right? They're just not as good as the next generation of players behind them. Okay. That's natural. That happens in regular sports too. Sure. Some people sure. only last so long. And when it's your time, moving to content it is the most natural progression. It makes the most sense. So it only helps to start that sooner, you know, to just have it ready as a backup. Because I'm sure a lot of these players aren't sure. thinking, oh, I'll play a video game for a while and then once I'm washed, I don't know, work at a McDonald's, go back to school with like, you know, some random degree, I don't, I don't know, do nothing. like invest my winnings in the stock market, buy some Dogecoin. I, I don't know what people are gonna do with this or if anybody has more than a five year plan when they enter esports. But it's true. For me, I, I really am the type to like plan out my entire life. So I I see this as the next logical step in the plan I have created for myself. And I don't know if every player thinks like that to be honest. For them maybe this is just oh I'm playing esports, I'm a really good player right now, let's just see how far this goes and they are thinking about it. I don't know. But all I know is, right now, for content and just being outside of the pro scene for a bit, even if this is like some random break and I retire, which is unlikely, but it's been a nice, really nice mental break. Like, mentally speaking, it's been very healthy for me. I feel way less stressed. So I am very happy with myself right now and I definitely don't like regret that decision. So even though other people like you seem to be very sad about it, <laughs> that I'm no longer wanting to like play on that stage. All right, one more, one more hypothetical here. Okay. Let's say the Olympics are announced, all okay. right? And there's a million dollar prize pool or something crazy, crazy prize pool. $10 million. Sure, 10 million with some Dogecoin on the side or whatever. Nice. Uh, <laughs> let's say they, it's country based. United States team, mm -hmm. Canadian team, blah, blah, blah. Let's say there's a national qualifier for the United States of America, okay. which is where you reside, right? Yes. In the United States. Let's say there's a big prize pool for that. And then all of a sudden, if you're a top 10 team in the United States alone, you're making mm -hmm. some serious money. Is that something you go for? If you're a top 10 team in the United States. That's 30 players. Top 30 top players. Top 30 in the United States. Significant prize pool. If I had enough time ahead of time, maybe I would try for it. Maybe. like you, So you, that's, that's open. Me, you're you're, kind of, you're kind of open, open to something. I, I, maybe. Because honestly, I could see things like that maybe. happening. You I, know? I do. I'm a very competitive person. Right. I do find right. competing fun. Right. Like, I get even win or loss, I do find it fun. So, I guess... For me, it's not like I want to just. It, it just depends. It depends the on the ecosystem that's there at any given time. Right, and right now it's very. You have to be the best of the best, and I don't feel like I'm the best of the best. I feel like I'm okay. That's how I feel, and so if I'm just gonna be okay at something, I would rather. Move. Is Kronovi just okay at Rocket League? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> I want to. I want to be the best, or strive to be the best at what I do, and I would rather try that in content than pro play. At least right now. I gotcha. So for you, it's more about winning. And if you're not winning, or if you're not in the top three, you're less interested. Right, I do have that high bar that I set for myself. And if I'm not meeting that, I need to do something else. Gotcha, well thank, thanks for, sorry for the onslaught there, you know. It was, we, it was, it was quite a battle. We gotta get to the bottom of this, you know. This guy, you know, he's, he's good at Rocket League. And, uh, and the, those, are, those are questions worth asking. But let, let's get back to the event itself. So how, how did you enjoy yourself this event here in LA? Oh, it was great. This was, I missed this. I sorely missed this. Me too, man. Just getting to see everybody, honestly. That, that's really where it's at. The matches were cool and all, yeah. Some Rock League got played. But I got to meet people I haven't seen in, in like 
what feels like years and it was like you know maybe one and a half but it felt like a decade went by and i haven't got to see everybody so that's been the, the best thing for me and meeting new people who had just entered the esports scene during the online era you know getting to put a name to a base happened way more this event than at any other event honestly i'm sure you have fans coming up to you sign, you know getting you to sign autographs or you know expressing their admiration for your competitive career or for your you know your work on youtube and your content uh how do you feel when, when you hear those words i guess if, if people are saying they miss you in the competitive scene or, or they really enjoy your content. What, what, what are your reactions to, to that? I mean, it always puts a smile on my face. Someone goes, hey. And it's inspiring, right? Oh, always. The number one comment I get is someone comes with a photo, hey, can we get a photo? And you're my inspiration to play this game. Like every single fan that comes to me, 99% of the time, the only, what they tell me is the only reason they even started playing Rocket League was from watching my stuff back in the day. and. That really means a lot. Um, I am so grateful to fans and people that come up and say stuff like that. I guess one more question uh, on that topic. You won a BMW once at, yeah. at an event. I remember this because mm -hmm. I was trying out for RLCS. They didn't know what who they wanted as a host. They had Golden Boy there for a second. They're like, Axel Slash, come on through. And when I went to the studio to check it out, Kenobi was there. And he had just come from an event where he won a car. I think it was like E3 or something. Yeah, I went, I went to E3 for fun because I got invited by a member of uh, who was on the Twitch staff. Of course. I was at a PAX East with friends for fun. I did a meet and greet at PAX East next to Summit 1G of all people. And uh, everybody just walked past me and went to Summit. Nobody knew who I was. That was very humbling. Um, Cause this is like the, like the peak of my like career is I, I just sit next to someone and I just get like overshadowed. It was just, it was crazy. Um, but he said, Hey, do you want to like tickets to E3? I was like, yeah, sure. Whatever. Yeah. That sounds great. Cause it was, it's hard to get in like without yeah. just random like to press and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I was just going to E3 for fun because someone had invited me and then I, my flight, I get a message. Hey, did you know there's going to be a tournament for a car? At E3, and I went. This is not happening to me. There's and this no was way. like eight years ago. Dude. This is twenty. This was before the season one world championship. What day this is was, it? <laughs> this was in 2016. This was like June or July of 2016. Right. And I go to the event, and the tournament format's weird. It's super scuffed. Of whatever. course. That, they didn't know what. We're they were like, doing. you know, one player on the team, whoever has the most points or something. Gets it was a to go ten minute match as well. It was oh weird. Oh my god. But. They literally but handed a... me the keys to a car after the weekend, and I literally thought I was dreaming. All right, so that's my argument here, dude, because okay. in the wide world of esports, we don't know what people are going to produce because a lot of people don't know what they're doing. So the, you, there might just be a Rocket League tournament where there's, like, something crazy up for grabs, which means you're going to stay in competitive shape just in case that happens. Well... You're gonna be I good enough like, to I go. I feel like we would know if somebody was giving away a car for a tournament. Would we? You didn't know I when you like, went when you went to oh, E3. Hey, you hey, didn't there were know. like 600 viewers for this Twitch stream. Exactly. Like, few people knew. I just, I feel like, I feel like I do a good job of watching the community from a distance. But lots of people don't know I lurk in their streams. Actually, <laughs> I am, I am everywhere. <laughs> you watch out. But I would know. Okay, me of all people, I would know. You would know. If someone else won a car. The last time I have was the freestyle tournament, right? Are you like sure? Floor. That's the last time someone won a car. Do you realize how big esports is getting and how big Rocket At League least is? In Rocket League, okay. Do, I you, realize, do you realize how endemic Rocket League is compared to like Counter Strike or like other games? Well, yeah. There are so many brands who just adore Rocket League, and there might be something up for grabs that are beyond hey, your wallet. If you, if you recently won a vehicle playing Rocket League tournament, let us know in the comments, okay? <laughs> My point is. <laughs> Maybe there's a tournament out there we don't know about. Maybe there's a yacht up for grabs or a Lamborghini hey, up for grabs. Cool. You need to be in shape for that. I'm not your manager or anything, but... Man, you are... You kind of are, though. You kind of, like, you know, give me a motivational a friend. push. I'm just a friend here. I would rather, like, you know, put out some YouTube content and maybe one day my content staying in shape. Well you're staying to, in like, shape. You're staying buy. in shape. You have to stay in shape. Well... I do want my content to be focused on high-level gameplay. Okay. I mean, I still like sure. am on like ranked leaderboards. Do you, every do you still season. play in the rank, the, the you know the six-man stuff? I don't do as much six-man's, but do you still scrim or anything like that? No, no, no scrims. That could I'm just be like, good for you too. I'm just trying to be a ranked demon, you know. And okay. I was, I was last season. I mean, this season just reset. So well, then I'm maybe we should queue together. Out. I'm trying to gain elo, Axel. <laughs> <laughs> Where? 
What coast are you on again? I'm on East Coast. Dirty East Coast. East Coast is much easier than West Coast, so I'll. I'll well, the West servers suck. Well, because you're not they're on in, West. They're, if they're, you're, I'm in Seattle, so I'm chilling on West servers, right? Yeah, but East servers are probably like what 70, 80 ping for you. Pretty bad. Bad. Pretty bad. I can't do it. I won't do it. Yeah. Just, just get used to it. Just get used to the lag. I'm not gonna play on East servers. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else can we talk about? This has been a nice, it's been a nice conversation. It's been a minute. It's been yeah, a minute. it's been good. Um, all right. G two just won. You have him. You have some history with those boys. So how do, how do you feel for for those guys? I am I'm super happy for them. Um, I mean, my time at G two was 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 good. Um, you know, there was things didn't end on the best of notes, but everybody in this community and in the pro scene works super hard every day for these goals and they, they go under so much stress just to get to the chance to lift that trophy and it's been a long time coming for for that roster i mean they just picked up atomic but for janet's in chicago together to, to finally get to lift the trophy out of land like that that means a lot to them and seeing how much it means to them like it, it gets to me and especially since it was cool um rizzo was the one to hand out you know the mvp medals as well and he's not playing for them anymore because he um you got that's another conversation so i need to talk to rizzo you, next you need to you need Don't to get worry. on rizzo's case i next, will because okay? you're on mine oh, right I now will. rizzo's oh, the same boat yes. same boat okay? i will talk he's, to that guy he, he's the one who made me want to do this these kids know? dude they anyway <laughs> sorry but I, i'm very i'm very proud of them um i'm very happy for them they they, they totally deserve it they, they were the best team at the event i predicted them to win actually um monday they're good dude. this is, this is they're, sunday they're, they're good on monday before i flew out here i predicted g2 through upper bracket queso through lower bracket wow. with a bracket reset that queso would win followed by a g2 win it's exactly what happened i know i have a big brain but i had faith in the g2 boys the whole way well, because they're really good well hold on first of all I don't think, you know, you pursuing the pro-life is out of the question. But second of all, based on what you just said, maybe you need to be on the desk. I am, I am, I am going to be pushing for that soon. I did enjoy, I got to be on the analyst desk for um, the online section of uh, the Mobile One Mountain Classic thing. Yep. Um, one of the, I think it was Regional 3, I was on for Just Championship Sunday. And I had a great time. I felt very at home. I felt very natural. I probably didn't do the best job with some of the other casters because they've been you know, you guys have been doing this forever yeah, you're working fine. with production and stuff. And I'm very inexperienced, but I loved it and I want to get better at it. And I I want to be doing stuff like that eventually. I feel like that's a path I know I could enjoy quite a lot. Well, let me just say that most of the value from you is just your experience and what you have done. That is like almost a priceless thing to have as an asset on the broadcast, in my opinion. Uh, so let me just say that. All right, last question here. I'm Axel Toss, 31 years old, proud of it. I believe I'm in my prime, really. Like some people might say, oh, you're old, you're a grandpa. No, I'm in my prime and I will convince you of that, let me assure you. So let me ask you this, Kenobi. Okay. If I were to really train and really go hard, maybe get a maybe get a lesson from you or something mm -hmm. and really pursue Rocket League, do you think I could make it on the stage up there? No. You're on the 30. <laughs> no. Sorry, 30 year olds don't belong on the esports. How do you know? League. Because no one who's How 30 you know, has bro? lifted a trophy yet. When a 30 year old lifts Just because it doesn't, it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it can't happen. I mean, okay, then get, get on stage next major. Come on. Well, no, I, on. you know, I got to start in you the right. Pro prove I, me wrong. I have to start in six bands and all that. But, but okay, my, my, my point is year. if I if I concertedly focus on eight hour days just grinding Rocket League. Do you think my? Do you think I don't have the dexterity to, to be up there? You could as a thirty-one year old. You could, you could learn it. Maybe do some reaction. Do you time think there's tests. a chance? What's the chance? What you know? What's the percent chance? Like one in a million. Gosh, dang it! Dude. <laughs> Give me a little better. Like than one that. in a hundred thousand. I'll take it. He knows more than I do. But if you put 10 hours a day, it's like 1 in 50. Let us yeah. know in the comments. What, what what chance do you give me? Kenobi's not being very nice to me at all with that. I would give myself a 1 in a 1,000 chance, okay? I'm pretty good, dude. With, with that much of a work ethic? Yeah, yeah. I, if, you really, if you really set your mind to it, you can do anything. I do believe in that. All right. Let's leave it at that, then. Thank you, Kenobi. Thank you for your time. Uh, any final words? Anything you want to shout out before we sign off? Um, no, I mean, I'm, shout out you, man. I'm just, I'm just happy to be here, um, to see everybody. It's really nice to catch up with people and, you know, just get my thoughts on the event. This event is, lands are magical. It, and just getting to be back and doing these consistently is 
I needed this. I needed this in my life. I need Rock League esports in my life, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to miss it for the world. So I'm 100%. happy to be here. Yeah, I agree 100. percent That being said, we gotta go mingle with all our friends because that's what we do at the land event. If you haven't been to a Rocket League land, you gotta make it out. Copper box coming up for you uh, European folks. Dallas, Texas is gonna be the spot for the World Championship event. Um, other than that, you know, we're on behalf of, I'm on behalf of Juke Tier, so very friendly with other esports. They have events going on everywhere all the time, so make it happen. Enjoy the community and make it to your local land. Support your local esports. Kenobi, thanks for hanging out. Yeah, thanks for having me. That's gonna do it for this interview. And again, download the Juke app. It's available on Android and on iOS. See you next time.